All right, so then I wanted to touch on art projects. Now, you know, straight away you think of art blocks. Um, and within art blocks, you, you get different uh, collections by different artists. Um, about two months ago, they actually split up the collection like this into different categories. But before, it all used to be under the same um, art blocks curated umbrella. It's still under there, but it's now in different categories and you'll click on different artists and have a look at what they have. Obviously, some collections are a lot more valuable than others or a lot more sought after and therefore a lot more valuable. But I mean, this one looks quite cool. Let's just click on it. And you'll see each collection without, within the art blocks curated has got its own collection size, obviously its own own account, um, floor price. So it's, a, it's just an NFT, NFT within it. Um, but the nice thing about art blocks curated is that it gives artists who otherwise wouldn't have the know-how um, on how to start their own projects um, an opportunity to do it under the umbrella of art blocks. And art blocks helps them along with all the stuff that they have strength in. Obviously, you know, the contracts and um, assisting with guidance on many things that have to do with the NFT side so that the artist can really focus on their art and the thing that they're good, uh, that they're good at. And, you know, every art project is different, but most of the art projects, there isn't the same utility that we were talking about before with normal NFTs. So there isn't really going to be, uh, you know, uh, another collection afterwards that is airdropped. Um, and you're not going to see things that you usually look for um, in this because people are buying it for the art. And, and typically we'll just keep it as an art piece, um, you know, have it on a digital frame or have it on a on a normal um, printed uh, piece of uh, canvas and have it framed in their house. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's a, a good example. You then have your equivalent of your board apes and those are the Fidenzas. Um, and if you look over here, their floor price at the moment is 78 Ethereum for one of them. It's a collection of uh, 999 with uh, 500 owners. Um, and let's just look at the activity because some of these go for even crazier amounts. I mean, yeah, yeah. So 200 Ethereum. Wow. Uh, he has a 207 Ethereum sale. So, you know, that was uh, middle of November-ish. Um, it does look since then that there hasn't been um, those size sales. Um, but the volume has come up like, yeah, there were four sales in a day, which you've got to understand for a 70 ETH floor project, four sales is, it actually looks like their busiest day uh, was four sales. So these are highly sought after by collectors. And again, you're not looking for community. You're not looking, this is a piece of, literally a piece of digital art, but also a piece of art history. Because, you know, this is like Michael Jackson is to pop music. You know, this is the, these are the first proper successful art NFTs and they're going to hold significant value and historical value. Um, so, you know, it's really interesting to see that you could sell something like this for this sort of price. And uh, you think of your, you know, Monet's and your big arts in the secular wor world and it's the same thing. Um, it also sells for millions and millions of dollars. Um, then just to bring it into a more middle of the of the range art project, a, a good example here is Galaxy Eggs. Um, the artwork is truly, truly beautiful um, and really so detailed. I want to open, let's open this one here. This is really incredible. Yeah, these are awesome. I love these. They, I just want to show you properly, properly, properly. I'm just going to do that. There we go. I mean, that that is really just so beautiful. And the amount of detail in it is incredible. Um, uh, they've been around for about three months now. Um, and they really did quite well initially. Their floor price was uh, up to about one and a half Ethereum. And ever since then, they've slowly been going down. But this is an example of an art project that also has utility. Right. So it's beautiful art, but there's also a community. You can go into Discord. Recently, they did a drop, um, a free airdrop. It was actually yesterday of their second collection. Um, I'll just find it for you in my Discord here. It's called Galaxy Warriors. Um, and they're also really stunning artwork. I think I've got too many channels here, Heath. <laughs> yeah. Got to like sell some NFTs, right? <laughs> 
So here's a preview. So it's basically people in a scene. I'll try to find a better version. If I open the original, you should be able to see it better. Let's see. Cool. Yeah, and there's obviously lots of different scenes, um, you know, lots of different sneak peeks. I'll show you a few more. I mean, that's also really, really cool. You can see the mushrooms in the background. Yeah. It's like something out of the space age. But this is more of a typical project like we've been talking about from the perspective that there is a roadmap. If you look in their Discord here, um, you know, and they've got plans for the for that they've laid out to the community. I do think even the, the other art projects that are purely art, you know, the, part of their roadmap might be that they go through to the metaverse um, and have an art gallery there. Right. Um, yeah. An example of that is uh, like Galactic Apes here have said that they're going to be doing like a virtual gallery um, and a physical gallery also um, where they have virtual NFTs on the wall. Um, and they also want to go into the metaverse and have a gallery in the metaverse. So in that, this is a, a really new project um, by, by a famous uh, artist. Um, I love this. I mean, this is, you know, I'm, uh, you know, something I can identify with. Um, but yeah, really stunning. But I mean, so there is some sort of utility. But here, when you're looking at buying into an art project, I really think you've got to say what speaks to me. And if you love it, um, and uh, you know, it's something you can afford, and you're going to treasure that, and you're going to put that, you know, front of your house, and and really, every time you look at it, it gives you it gives you a, a warm feeling inside. Then it's worth it. Then do it because in the end of the day, you're not looking to resell it, um, and you love it. So, I mean, you know, it's very different to the utility type projects that we've spoken about before, but definitely, as you've seen from those Fidenzas, has its place in the space, a very big and prominent space, uh, place. And uh, yeah, I mean, also there, the, the main thing you're looking at, it's not so much the team, it's who is that artist? Yeah, and what has that artist achieved? And what, what does that artist stand for? And, you know, there was the whole thing with Jungle Freaks, which I don't really want to get into, but it was, um, you know, that very famous artist who used to do illustrations uh, of the cartoons for Hustler. Um, and, and they came out and the floor went mad because here you've got a well-known, established artist. Um, and, and then some people looked into um, some of the previous work he had done and it was unbecoming and that tanked the floor immediately. So when you're looking at investing in an art project that's um, an NFT, you really want to research the artist quite quite in depth, especially if it's a high value one. You know, something like this is 0.3 ETH. You know, I wouldn't spend two months investigating the guy. But if you're looking at spending 10, 15, 20 ETH on a project, definitely look into the artist, look into his history, um, because you do want it to appreciate in value. Even if you love the artwork, you still do want that. So yeah, most important thing, the artist, make sure you like it um, and definitely has its space in this whole NFT world.